During a meeting with top executives of international news agencies at the Street Petersburg International Economic Forum, Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke on various pressing issues. This event, held at the Lacta Center skyscraper, the headquarters of Gazprom, provided a platform for Putin to address several key concerns. He warned that Russia might consider supplying long-range weapons to other countries to strike Western targets if NATO allies continue to allow Ukraine to use their arms against Russian territory. Emphasizing the gravity of recent Western actions, Putin suggested that such measures could severely undermine international security and lead to serious problems. He stated that if NATO allies were involved in supplying Ukraine with weapons that could strike Russian soil, Russia reserved the right to respond in kind. The United States and Germany had recently authorized Ukraine to use long-range weapons to hit targets within Russia, which, according to Putin, could be seen as direct involvement in the war against Russia. On that Wednesday, a Western official and a U.S. senator revealed that Ukraine had used American weapons to strike inside Russia, under newly approved guidance from President Joe Biden. This guidance allowed American arms to be used for the limited purpose of defending Kharkiv, Ukraine's second-largest city. The official, speaking anonymously due to the sensitive nature of the information, explained that this move was part of a broader strategy to help Ukraine defend itself more effectively. Putin argued that using Western-supplied weapons involved military personnel from those countries controlling the missiles and selecting targets, implying that Moscow could take asymmetric steps in other parts of the world. However, the U.S. military denied controlling the missiles or the targets, maintaining that their role was limited to providing the weapons. Putin posed a rhetorical question about why Russia shouldn't supply similar weapons to regions where they could be used to strike sensitive facilities in the countries that were supplying arms to Ukraine. He stated that this possibility was something Russia would consider seriously. Addressing the potential use of nuclear weapons, Putin reiterated that Russia's security doctrine clearly outlined the conditions under which nuclear arms might be used. He stressed that if actions by other countries threatened Russia's sovereignty and territorial integrity, Moscow considered it possible to use all means at its disposal, including nuclear weapons. He would highlighted that even Russia's battlefield nuclear weapons were significantly more powerful than those used by the United States against Japan during World War II. The dialogue extended over more than three hours, during which Putin answered questions from senior news leaders, including those from the Associated Press. He remarked that regardless of whether Joe Biden or Donald Trump won the upcoming American presidential election, it would not significantly alter Russia-U.S. relations. He expressed a pragmatic stance, indicating that Russia would work with any president elected by the American people. Putin suggested that serious changes in American policy towards Russia were unlikely, regardless of the election outcome. During the session, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine was a dominant topic. But before we continue, if you are enjoying this briefing, please kindly like and subscribe to this channel for more updates. Putin claimed that the West had missed opportunities to end the fighting, referring to a letter he had allegedly written to Biden, which suggested that hostilities could cease within a few months if the U.S. stopped supplying Ukraine with weapons. This claim underscored Putin's narrative that the West's actions were perpetuating the conflict rather than seeking a resolution. The forum also served as a platform for Putin to promote Russia's development and seek investors, showcasing the nation's economic potential despite the geopolitical tensions. The discussion at the forum highlighted the complexities of the current international landscape, with Putin criticizing the West's military support for Ukraine and warning of potential reciprocal actions by Russia. Berlin had also authorized Ukraine to strike targets on Russian soil with German-supplied long-range weapons, a move that Putin described as a dangerous step, which he believed could ruin relations between Berlin and Moscow. Ukrainian officials have been urging the U.S. and other allies to allow them to defend themselves against attacks originating from Russian territory, particularly as Kharkiv, located close to the Russian border, had come under intensified attack. According to a report from the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainian forces had struck a Russian S-300-400s air defense battery in the Belgorod region, likely using a high-mobility artillery rocket system, HIMARS. This air defense system was positioned within range of Kharkiv, demonstrating the strategic importance of long-range weapons in the ongoing conflict. Putin also touched on the issue of the detained Wall Street Journal reporter, Evan Dershkovich, held on espionage charges. He acknowledged the U.S. administration's efforts to secure Dershkovich's release, but emphasized that such matters needed to be resolved on a reciprocal basis. Putin mentioned that talks with U.S. intelligence agencies were ongoing, but needed to be conducted discreetly. The conversation at the forum further addressed the broader geopolitical dynamics, with Putin criticizing the West's delivery of long-range weapons to Ukraine. He argued that Moscow might respond by arming other countries with similar weapons to target Western facilities. This stance was part of a broader critique of Western military aid to Ukraine, which Putin viewed as a provocative and dangerous escalation. 
He pointed out that delivering arms to a war zone, especially with the involvement of military personnel from the supplying countries, was a serious and hazardous step. Putin singled out Germany, noting that the presence of German-supplied tanks on Ukrainian soil had a profound impact on Russia, given the historical context of World War II. He warned that the decision to supply missiles capable of hitting targets on Russian territory would definitively destroy Russian-German relations. In his view, the West had failed to acknowledge the origins of the conflict, which he traced back to a pro-Western revolution in Ukraine in 2014. The issue of military casualties was another sensitive topic, with Putin avoiding specific figures for Russian losses but suggesting that Ukraine's losses were significantly higher. He claimed that the ratio of irrecoverable losses was 1 to 5, though he provided no detailed evidence to support this assertion. The sensitive nature of military casualties in Russia was underscored by the country's stringent laws against criticizing the conflict or spreading information deemed false about the military. Putin was also asked about the death of AFP video journalist Armin Soldan, who had been killed in Ukraine, likely due to Russian rocket fire. He expressed a willingness to investigate the incident, though he acknowledged the practical challenges of doing so in a war zone. This response highlighted the ongoing humanitarian concerns in the conflict, with journalists and civilians often caught in the crossfire. The discussion also touched on the U.S. political landscape, with Putin commenting on the potential impact of the American presidential election on U.S.-Russia relations. He downplayed the significance of whether Biden or Trump won, suggesting that there would be no major changes in American policy towards Russia. However, he criticized the recent criminal charges against Trump, arguing that they were politically motivated and undermined the notion of the United States as a leading democracy. He contended that the prosecution of Trump was an example of the judicial system being used for internal political struggles, which he believed tarnished the image of American democracy globally. Trump, who faced a jury conviction on multiple felony charges related to a hush money case, had previously praised Putin as a smart guy. Despite the legal challenges, Trump remained a significant figure in American politics with the potential to influence future U.S.-Russia relations. Putin's remarks suggested that from Moscow's perspective, the fundamental dynamics of these relations would remain unchanged regardless of the election outcome. In addressing the detention of Evan Gershkovic, Putin indicated that Russia and the United States were in constant contact regarding a possible prisoner exchange. He emphasized that any decisions would be made on the basis of reciprocity, reflecting the ongoing negotiations between the two countries' intelligence services. Jershkovich's detention on espionage charges had been a point of contention, with the U.S. government declaring him wrongfully detained and working towards securing his release. Throughout the forum, Putin's statements reflected a broader narrative of Russian defiance in the face of Western actions. He portrayed Russia as a nation defending its sovereignty and territorial integrity against what he viewed as Western aggression and interference. This narrative was aimed at both domestic and international audiences, reinforcing the Kremlin's position on the conflict in Ukraine and its broader geopolitical strategy. The Street Petersburg International Economic Forum served as a significant platform for Putin to communicate these messages, both to the international media and potential investors. Despite the ongoing conflict and geopolitical tensions, the forum highlighted Russia's efforts to attract investment and promote its economic development. This dual focus on security and economic growth underscored the complex and multifaceted nature of Russia's current strategy. Putin's remarks at the forum also highlighted the ongoing challenges and uncertainties in the international landscape. The conflict in Ukraine, the dynamics of U.S.-Russia relations, and the broader geopolitical tensions all contributed to a complex and volatile environment. Putin's statements reflected a combination of pragmatism, defiance, and a strategic calculation aimed at navigating these challenges while promoting Russia's interests on the global stage. In conclusion, Putin's speech and subsequent discussion at the Street Petersburg International Economic Forum provided a comprehensive overview of Russia's current stance on several critical issues. His warnings about the potential for reciprocal actions in response to Western military support for Ukraine, his critique of the West's involvement in the conflict, and his comments on U.S.-Russia relations all underscore the complexities and challenges of the current geopolitical landscape. The forum served as a platform for Putin to articulate his vision and strategy, both to a domestic audience and to the international community. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.